Good evening. It is seven o'clock, so we will call the September meeting of the Trousdale of the Hartsville Trousdale County Planning Commission to order. Uh, first, Marianne, would you do our roll call? Marianne Baker's here. John Kerr here. David Thomas here. Rhonda Keesling. Rhonda Keesling. Thomas Harper. Here. Mark Swaffer, here. Carol Pruitt, Carol Pruitt, Sarah Murray, Sarah Murray. We have five present and three absent. Did you get David, Sam? Sorry, David, no. It's easy to forget <laughs> Dave. <laughs> he sits over there by himself trying to, you know. Uh, all right, we do have a quorum tonight, even though we have three members absent. Next on our agenda is the approval of minutes. Everyone's had these for a couple of days now. Hopefully you've had time to look over them and uh, look to see if they were correct or need any adjustment. We appreciate Ms. Rosemary taking those for us last month uh, and, uh, and everything. Uh, anybody notice any? changes or corrections that might need to be made. I didn't see any. Just Rosalie. Oh, Rosalie. Yeah. You keep calling her Rosemary and I just can't help but laugh now. I'm going to tell you, you I, I was probably lucky to get that close. <laughs> Sorry. I have a bad habit of that. Uh, thank you, though. Back to the minutes. Other than my uh, mispronunciation. Anything else that uh, anyone saw that needs to be uh, changed, added, corrected? If not, I would accept a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Have a motion by Mr. Swaffer to approve the minutes, second by Mr. Thomas. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Uh, Next, has anybody got any changes that we need to make to our agenda tonight? Anything added, deleted? I believe everything's been updated. Okay, thank you, Sam. All right. Uh, before we, under old business, Last month, I brought up about the uh, building materials used. Is that what the discussion thing's about later on? No. It's not. It is not. You know, last month, you know, we talked about building materials and things that can be used on uh, uh, commercial stores and, and things like that. And uh, I think I'd asked for Sam and Keelan to maybe look. You were going to maybe check in on Sumner County, what they do and stuff. Was that, am I wrong on that? Or did, so, uh, so the, the build materials, that's, that's something that we need to um, be putting something together for our long-term planning, but we really got to get the long-term planning process started so that we can initiate a full plan. Okay. Uh, well, I would kind of like to do something a little faster than that. Yes, sir. I, I would have to agree with you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we can always come up with something now because of the growth we're having now and then just have that tied into the planning. But I don't see any reason why we should have to wait because who knows at this point, we've already waited four years, who knows what happens next to delay us from getting an actual plan. In the meantime, we've got commercial businesses and lots waiting to be built on. So I, I wouldn't like to see a delay at all. Let me, let me clarify. Um, we are and will be working on it and we'll bring forward um, the info that we get put, put together, but it really needs to be uh, put into, I guess the end game goal is to have that part of our long-term planning process. Um, but yes, we can initiate it as we get it. Um, but the end game goal is to have a complete set of plans for what we want the corridors to look like. Um, that way, legally, you know, we have firm stance on 
this is what was decided this is what everybody's doing but yes we we will get you the info as we get it together do you have an idea of what kind of time frame you're you're thinking about in that I believe we could have something close to what we're looking for sometime around November. Um, Y'all can review it. And then in December, uh, if everything meets what you are looking for, then okay. we could push it forward from there. Okay. Uh, I do have another discussion item that uh, I, hopefully y'all saw where I added to your email chain today uh, a question that had been brought up to me that I wasn't aware of, uh, that we had stopped putting notice signs in front of properties that were to be up for rezoning. Uh, I, I'm, I was not aware of that. Uh, would you like to discuss that, Sam? So it's probably been over a year ago. The attorney, the mayor, myself um, had a long discussion over the, the signage. Um, the state department and the actual county department that does all the mowing, mowing um, has been mowing all the signs. And basically every sign that get, gets put out gets mowed. So we've been purchasing a lot of them. Um, we got into looking on what's the actual requirements for public notice. And public notice is uh, yard signs are not mentioned in state rules or county rules. There's only one location in all of the county ordinances that mentions a sign and it's for an outdoor gun range. Okay. Um, so signs are not required. Um, the state law and the county law states one posting in a public paper. So just one. Yeah. So with us doing two postings, um, putting it on the Facebook page and the county website, the county attorney says we're over and beyond any kind of public notice requirement. Oh, I, I think that we're covered by state law as a minimum standard. Um, I, I just, I'm big on transparency, always have been, even as a principal, I thought our parents should know what was going on and, and that type of thing. Uh, my personal opinion is, is that I don't, people in my neighborhood don't get up on Monday and say, let me check that website they might be trying to stick an apartment complex up our, well, I ain't gonna say that, uh, uh, on us. And uh, uh, that type of thing. Uh, that people just don't think that way. And uh, now if they see a sign out there, uh, then they typically notice something like that. I've never know, usually a sign would only be there for no more than a couple of weeks or so. I haven't noticed mowing being done much quicker than that. Uh, and I know that we didn't make, I guess we didn't make it a rule. This came, this first came up back several years ago and we suggest, I believe Mr. Jewell was the, uh, the codes person at that time. And uh, we thought, and when I say we, I'm talking about the planning commission that people should be aware that their property near them is up for rezoning. Uh, that may just be my only opinion right now. That's why I emailed y'all and asked y'all to be thinking about this so that you could comment on that tonight. Just because I think it ought to be one way, don't make it right. But that is my strong opinion that we should uh, be as transparent as possible on uh, what's going on in a neighborhood, you know, that type of thing. Uh, 
And so uh, it's, I thought that all through, I guess it all from then up until you and our past mayor and, and I forgot who else you said was in on that meeting, Mr. Beller, I believe, uh, we have been doing that up until that time. Uh, I would like to see us go back to that. Uh, I see it in Sumner County all the time. If a county as big as Sumner County can can do it, I, I don't know why we couldn't because we're not going to have, generally speaking, more than just a handful. And, and that would be a lot at one at coming up for one meeting. I know the next county commission meeting, I guess, has five or six that we ain't talked about last month and that's a lot we, we rarely ever have that many normally it would be one two three would be a good amount uh, what do y'all think guys i mean like i said if y'all don't agree with me feel free so to, to speak up there there has been discussion uh this has been talked about a lot um okay. there has been discussion on reducing other things that we're doing like the newspaper postings and going to the signs instead of the postings because right now we're way over budget on the postings um, this the amount of stuff that we've been having come forward um it, to go in at the paper and what we have to put in there um it's 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 ran the budget through the roof on the postings um so th there has been discussion on um reversing that portion and going to signs. Uh, that's something that um, needs to be another sit down conversation with county attorney and the county attorney needs to make that decision if that would be adequate uh, because all the state rulings have been, was it in the paper? That, that's the court's thing, was it in the paper? So would a sign be adequate um, instead of a post in the paper, but doing both on the same, um, it's, it's thousands of, and thousands of dollars. So, um, uh, Ms. Amy's, Ms. Amy's here. She can speak to how much the budget's Are running. On the signs? No. So the signs, the, the signs that we have uh -huh. and the, the ones that Sumner County has is actually way more expensive than the ones that we're using, but signs are way more expensive than you think they actually are. They very well could be. I haven't um, bought us, never bought us. And sign. to comment on the, the numbers, you've got to, it's not just this meeting that has to have the sign. It, that sign will stay throughout the other meetings as it goes through the county commission. Um, so you're, Two you, meetings. You, you, you're, right. you're multiplying. So if we've got rezoning is coming forward here. Did we put them out before the first hearing or is it between the first hearing and the second hearing? So every every uh, public meeting, so it'd be the second for the uh, county commission. That's what I was thinking. Um, but before uh, I was putting them out for each meeting to make sure everybody was well aware. And then I'm down to two signs at the moment. So the rest okay. of them have been mowed purchased and then mowed again and then purchased and mowed again so okay uh guys y'all anything y'all like to say anybody got any comments they'd like to make I'm, mr harper i'm sort of like you were mr harper you're gonna have to, there we, you go in the past you know we we did put those out and uh or uh, it seems uh work real well but uh I think it would be more transparent if we did put it out, put them out. Okay. Someone else? Yes, Mr. Thomas. So uh, I believe it was the last commission meeting, Sam, that um, one of the commissioners asked you about the sign. Is that correct? Yes. So, okay. so several, several commission meetings ago, signs were brought up and there was a statement made that was not accurate. Um, last commission meeting, they wanted me to elaborate on it, and I clarified that yeah. it's not a requirement um, in state or county rules. Okay. So um, from that point forward, I know there's been a couple of people who have been looking at, well, can we just do an ordinance through the commission to you know, have a set situation where 
instead of, because I remember just as you do having that conversation, I believe we did make a motion in a second. It was passed, but there was, that's it. I, I, there was nothing that went through the commission. We didn't send it to the county yeah. commission to be put into a resolution or, yeah, it was or just anything something like that. We it, was, it was something this body passed mm -hmm. for our coach person to do. So um, talking with uh, Chris Gregory, um, he had actually found the, an ordinance in Cheatham County, and uh, I was reading through it. And there's some things, you know, that we might want to change. But it sets a, a pretty nice situation as far as covering this. Um, it more than covers us with the state. And there's no way you could say at this point, if you're a neighbor of a property getting rezoned through that process that you didn't know. I mean, it requires us to send out letters to every adjoining property, certified mail, making two attempts. Um, it would require that the signed expense would then be put into the the fee for rezoning. So you're the person who's getting the rezoning done actually pays for the sign. Is there a fee for rezoning? There is. It's a hundred dollar fee. Okay. And as far as the cost from signs, I mean, recently I I bought four um, campaign signs that were because theirs requires a not just a smaller sign like we've been using or Sumner, but they require a a three foot by two foot sign. So you can't say that you didn't see it. It was right within 10 foot of the road. Um, I bought those same size signs. And I think, um, I don't think I spent more than $200 for all four of them. And that's double-sided and same material as Gene Carmen uses on theirs. And theirs are up for months at a time. So um, I think it's a very doable thing. Um, I would like to bring that in to planning and um, kind of let us go through it and then if everyone's in agreement at that point, then then send it on to commission. Um, that way the commission has something that has come through us and and that could be something that then is is ordinance no matter who's in the code's um, office that this is how we're gonna handle this for now on. And we don't have to worry about the community saying, well, we didn't know. Because I mean, there are, I don't buy a paper. Um, if was it coming through here, a lot of the rezonings I'd never know about um, because I don't travel in those neighborhoods. Right. Um, but I don't want, I don't want the community because they didn't know about it to think we were trying to hide it from them. Um, that doesn't benefit us or the community either way. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm not sure I agree about the expense of certified mail and stuff, but that's something we can discuss. I think it's a very good idea that, uh, you say Chris had that information. And I'm sure he wouldn't mind disseminating that information to all members of the planning commission. Uh, I'd like to hear the mayor's comments on that. So he would need to, he would need to uh, have a copy of that so that he could look at it and stuff. And then uh, we could uh, talk about it next month under old business and uh, kind of get a gist of what, what everybody's thinking, uh, you know, county, I would, you know, you, they can disseminate it to everybody, the county commissioners, the the mayor, the planning commission, you know, and and uh, and we have two county commissioners. So y'all can kind of tell us what you're hearing from from the others, unless they want to send someone to give us their their general opinion. You know, I, I think that's a good idea. Do y'all y'all agree with that? Just get some more information, have time to look at it, talk about it, put it under old business for next month. And Mr. Chairman, maybe during that time that uh, <clears throat> they can go back and look at our budget and maybe find our sales budget and maybe find some money that we can do a budget amendment once to get a get the new budget finance committee together to bring forward to them but maybe we can find a little money between I, now and then to yeah. buy a few signs. It would be interesting to know how much we spent on signs for the year yeah. before we stopped doing You said it was about a year ago, roughly. Um, it wasn't even a year ago. Okay. But the last purchase of a group of signs, I'll have to look. Okay. Um, but I, I think David's... David's idea is really good. Um, we have also been, 
there's a lot of been a lot of discussions that's been going on. We have also been discussing about increasing the fee for rezonings and um, adding fees for other things like site plan. I agree. I don't have a problem with putting the cost of the uh, sign onto the fee because that's covering what that person's asking to do anyway, and and they're generating this issue. So I have no problem. I have no problem with them paying that fee. Uh, that's just kind of the price of doing business. Uh, that's something that can be discussed, you know. And, so, and so, so currently the rezonings and the BZA applications are the only ones that actually get that fee. And that fee doesn't even cover a portion of the meeting. Um, it's not even covering the posting at the moment. Um, so obviously it needs to be looked at. Yeah. So that, that is something that we've been discussing and something that we're looking into is how to increase that fee. And okay. we can, with David's idea, we can tack that onto that final number because we need okay. to get it up to actually covering, um, sure. I portions agree. of the meeting. I agree. Guys, how y'all think, uh, any other, what do y'all think so far about what's been discussed? Kind of like our plan, sir. I think we need to go with it. Okay, so we'll uh, uh, let's think about it. We're going to get some. Chris is going to disseminate some information to us. Uh, hopefully, uh, maybe if uh, uh, Amy might be able to shoot us an email about maybe the. Uh, Whatever, I don't know how you buy it, if it's through a calendar year or something, if we could get just what was spent on signs the last year that we purchased them. Uh, and then we could uh, intelligently have a, uh, and what the cost is per sign. And then we can intelligently think about uh, what we might, what our costs are, and then see what maybe a, a uh, rezoning fee needs to be in the future that we could recommend or if the county court just wants to hand I mean there it's a fee that they would need to handle anyway they might just want to take that on themselves so there there was another uh thing that I was considering and we've been discussing is finding those they make a t-post sign holder it's a metal uh, a thick metal sign holder um and then we would do the initial purchase of a group of those and then the, the, the signs themselves that slip into them, we could tack onto the charge. But with those metal holders, I doubt anybody's going to want to run over it. What have we been using? They're, they're just the regular, uh, it's, it's an election sign that has the metal pieces that go in. Um, but they just get blended. So with okay. with uh, with the T post holders, um, it's going to do damage if they hit it. Another part of their uh, ordinance that I was looking at also had um, that the property owner who was requesting the rezoning was responsible for both the placement of the sign and maintaining the sign for just fifteen days um, before the um, which would be our first commission meeting so once it came through here then they would have the fit you know 15 days they had to you know have the sign out so everyone could see it and then they so they had to maintain the sign so that would take care of the the mowing issues okay was this in chris's stuff okay yeah if if he can get us that that'd be that'd be awesome it sounds like some really good sounds like a really good policy that they've got so I can, uh, I can understand that our county people that mow the roads, they don't care. They just run over everything when they're mowing the side of the road. So you'd have to get something that would big enough to, but them bush hogs, they don't care. <laughs> well, maybe we could put a word in the ear of the uh, superintendent of the county department and not mow down legal signs. Election signs, they're fair game. <laughs> but legal notice signs, that's a that's a different ball game. 
<laughs> Any other comments? I have one. About this. Yes, ma'am. I have and currently we're advertising the rezoning twice in the paper, right? We're only required to at, we're, run it once, but we're doing it twice. Is that what you're right. saying? Right. We're the state and and the state and the county ordinance only require it only once. And we're doing it twice, Facebook page and posting it on the county website. Okay. So again, thinking. those are all issues that uh we can discuss and and I mean there's some Sounds like some cost savings could be shifted around right. to help to help That's cover. I was going to say instead of advertising it twice in the mm -hmm. paper, maybe do it once in the paper and then the signs. Right. That would cost right. It. Yeah. I, one more thing I would like to add, though. Yes, sir. Um, for the rezonings that we've been doing to clean up zonings that should have been done already. Um, for example, the the M zoning that's out off of uh, Cemetery Road. Um, we've been waiving those rezoning fees, correct? Correct. Yeah. And I'd like I, to see that continue because that's not the property owner's fault or responsibility, in my opinion. Yeah. That was done without their knowledge or and should be just fixed. I agree. There um, that could be put in there also. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. All right. Any other comments about this issue before we get into our agenda? All right. First item under new business, request by Gene Carmen for the rezoning of 8,029 square feet on Planner Street from R1 to R2 to build a duplex in the 7th Civil District. Jim, are you representing that or you're not? Anyone here to speak about this request? Come on up, please. To the podium here, please uh, turn it on. State your name so the secretary can get it for the minutes. Uh, yes, my name is Gene Carmen. Here to answer any questions regarding the. Well, why don't you start off by telling us what you want to do? Uh, so basically, we just want to rezone it from R1 to R2 in order to do a duplex. Okay. So. Okay. Anybody on the uh, commission have any questions? Did you say you were Gene Carmen? How many of them are there? Any questions for Mr. Carmen from any member of the Planning Commission? Mr. Are Chairman, you going to put two buildings on that two two spots, one on each build, uh, one on each uh, plant there? Are you building two, or what are you going to do? So the the duplex is going on lot one. That's on this. Yes. If you look at lot one there, that's where the duplex is going and the structure that's already there is going to be torn down. Are you going to have entrance on to Hayes Street? Planners is awful short, narrow. I believe it'll be from Planners, if that's right. But yeah, I don't know how you could. Can you access Hayes, that from Hayes Street without going through someone else's property? He, it, is, it is a corner lot. Oh, okay. So, so the if you look on here, it actually shows uh, the the road. I think what Mr. Nolner was pointing out, which side of Planner Street are you going to be accessing it? Um, the the north side is actually a two lane, and the, the east side is basically a one lane. Yeah. Yeah. What you were saying, David, is planners is a very, very narrow street. Okay. I, I guess to answer your question, I don't know that yet. We're just kind of getting to the first step. We're okay. Just getting it rezoned. Yeah. Other questions for Mr. Karma? So, for clarification, Sam, on, on the drawing that you've given us, lot two is just there for reference. It is not included in this rezoning, correct? We're only looking at lot one. So if you let me get everything lined up here so I can give you a reference. Um, so if you look on the, you should have the zoning change application. Um, it says 19 in group B. 
parcel four. And then if you look down under the lot number is just lot one. So that was a long answer, but yeah, that's the one with 8,029 square feet, which is lot number one. You're not requesting anything at this time for lot number two, are you? Right. That was your question, wasn't it, David? Other questions? So that answers Mr. Noller's question about there is no entrance. There is no entrance from Hay Street. Then that's Couldn't got be. to be on Planters, right? Couldn't be. Okay. So yeah, there's no entrance from Hay Street. It's that corner corner lot number one. Um, it is a it is a valid question on which side of the Planter Street is it going to be on, but. Um, they're really not going to know until they know if the rezoning goes through to start making plans on what size of duplex they can get in there. The duplex that I have been presented and we've been discussing in the office, um, it potentially could face either direction. Um, but with it, that, that's something that Mr. Carmen, Jim Carmen, or somebody would have to determine on site because it's such a small lot. It'll have to be measured to exactness. One other, and Keely might be able to, to clarify this for me. Looking through her notes earlier today, uh, she's got on here for R2 that the minimum lot size for a duplex is 9,000 square feet. And this lot doesn't quite make, make that, uh, that size. I would assume she would uh, go over that in her report, but. I was going to bring that up if if you didn't, but I'm glad you mentioned that. That is, if you hadn't noticed that, guys, that's at the bottom of her report. Other questions for Mr. Carmen? All right, Keelan. So absolutely, thanks for teeing me up. Um, so just to give a little bit of details about this property. So it is 8,029 square feet. Um, so it does have frontage along Planters Street, which is considered a local uh, street per the Trousdale County, Trousdale County Major Transportation Plan. The surrounding uh, properties are all zoned R1 residential. So this property does have access to an eight inch water line, um, but does not currently have access to uh, public sewer. And it is not located within a, a flood hazard area. So I've also included in your notes the general description for the R1, which is the current zoning, and uh, the description for the R2, which is the proposed zoning, as well as the use is permitted. Um, so the crux of this, this issue, um, the minimum lot size for a single family house within the R2 zoning district is 75 square feet. So this lot does meet that requirement and would be allowed by right to have a single family house. Uh, but the minimum lot size for a duplex lot is 9,000 square feet. So a variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals would be required to be approved before a duplex could be, um, could be approved for this property. Okay. Sam, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Or we just, I know you said Keelan was going to handle most of this. Uh, Keelan was very thorough on all of it. Um, keep in mind that this is one of those situations. Um, I was bringing my info up to verify uh, numbers before I spoke. Um, this is one of those situations that the lot, lots pre existing anything. Um, it's something that I would be forced to work with them on on a house, regardless of size. Um, in the past, uh, I've had at the re requesting the owners to rezone to something that is closer to the. Uh, it gets closer to meeting the setbacks. It might not necessarily ever meet it, but it gets it closer um, there. Uh, getting it to R2 would make it um, closer to that uh, number for the size of the lot that it is. The duplex um, question, uh, that would be, as, as Keelan said, um, something that would have to potentially be requested. Okay, so uh, to summarize what you said, it is a lot of record. It's in the old 
city limits are, you would have to work with them for a house, but they're asking for something uh, different. Okay. Would Any, could you say, topics? could you say he would be creating an illegal lot for, for that? For a duplex? Yes. Uh, not if it were rezoned, it wouldn't be. If it wasn't rezoned, it is now for a duplex. But if, if for a duplex is 9,000, you said this is 8,000. I agree. I mean, it's, said, would it, that be an illegal lot for a duplex? My opinion. It wouldn't be an Ill <laughs> illegal lot for the zoning district because it does allow for a single family uh, uh, house and it does have enough square footage for that. The use for it as a duplex would require a uh, variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals. So it wouldn't be an illegal lot. It just would uh, limit the uses that it can be used for. That answer your question, Ms. Thomas. Uh, Keely, on the, uh, on the, for R1, what would be the, the minimum on that? Do you have that handy? A quick second and oh, I she's looking it, it would be this one's a little different since it is a lot of record yes so we good. would you know i'm just curious on, on how I much as far as i understand i just so want to make sure we, footage there. i just want to make sure we keep in mind this is a lot of record so yeah. the 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 minimum lot size on r1 is twelve thousand square feet um the lot width has to be 100 which it doesn't meet that and the front side and rear setbacks there's no way to meet it, it would make a pen pair. So then it's grossly out of R1 specs to put a house we would on be that. We would be closer to rezoning it to R3 to make something work. Either way, I'm going to have to work with them, um, getting it to a more feasible zoning that's closer is preferable. Um, R3 is not something that is a reasonable um, it's just, it's, it's, you've got R1 surrounding, you do have commercial there. So you, you could make the argument that it's close to commercial. We can do R3 for something. Um, but I don't think R3 personally is a reasonable request. R2, I think gets them closer to the game. Um, either way, I'm going to have to work with them, but at least we're, we're getting close to those numbers. I'm not sure we need to be talking about R3. The request is for an R2 zone. We need to stick with the request. Uh, Mr. Nollar, was you going to say something? Yes, sir. Uh, she said something about there wasn't no sewer line. How far away is the sewer line? I don't know, but if you give me a second, I can pull up the sewer map and figure that out. She's going to have to look it up. Uh, while she's doing that, let me just, to me, what I'm, the, our job is to, we have to send this to the planning, I mean, excuse me, to the county commission, and we can send it one of three ways, with a favorable recommendation, a negative recommendation, or we just send it. So just keep that in mind as, as we uh, move on in this discussion. But it will go before the county commission. Mr. Chairman, just for my clarity, normally would this a request like this go in front of the BZA before it would get to us or afterward? What's normal, Sam, do we know, or Keelan? So it, it's going properly because we need, a, we need to rezone it. Either way, it needs to be rezoned. Um, I mean, <clears throat> I would work with them, but I'd be – dealing more with just personal hypothetical measurements okay yeah 10 feet will work 15 feet will work i don't I, I don't like operating that way why are you saying that no. it has to be rezoned at some point it's it's uh the bza could work with it is a lot of record an r1 home could be built there it would just have to the bza would have to adjust side setbacks and things like that to make it meet a requirement because it is a lot of record and so, but uh, it, I mean, an R1 home could be built there. Am I right? That's true. That's what I was trying to explain. Okay. 
So um, it does appear that there is an eight inch uh, sewer line along Hayes Road, as well as uh, White Oak Street. So neither of them are adjacent. Nothing touching this property has sewer, um, but it's not particularly far away. Okay. All right, commissioners. Yes, Jeremy. Yes, sir. Make a motion to approve it. To approve? Okay. Do I have a second? I have a motion to send this to the county commission with a favorable recommendation. Did I state that right, Mr. Nolan? I made, made a motion to approve it. I didn't say which way. <laughs> well, then you best do some more talking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with a favorable. Okay. I have a motion to send this to the county commission with a favorable recommendation. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to send this to the planning, I mean, to the county commission with a favorable recommendation. All in favor, please say aye. Okay. All opposed, please say no. No. All right. We're going to do a, we're going to go back to my school days and we're going to raise hands. All those in favor of this motion, please raise your hand. One, two. Okay. All those against this motion, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. All right, so the motion fails. Do I have another motion? We got to send it one way or the other. Then I'd like to make a motion that we send it with an unfavorable approval. Okay, I have now I have a motion to send this to the county commission with an unfavorable recommendation. Do I have a second? Second by Mary Ann. All right, let's go back to hands we can do this quicker all those in favor of sending this rezoning request to the county commission with an unfavorable recommendation please raise your hand one two three four all those opposed please raise your hand motion passes four to two it will be sent to the county commission with an unfavorable recommendation from the planning commission next item on the agenda is a request by Mr. Lewis Beasley for the rezoning of 1.45 acres on Thoroughbred Lane from A1 to R1 in order to match up parcels that in addition that are in addition to the to what's currently there. Did I state that right? Jim? Yes, sir, you stated that correctly. Okay. Does I don't know what you have in your packets. Does everybody have a picture? Okay. So Mr. Beasley, last few months ago, we brought before you three lots in thoroughbred right there at the, in the curve right there. Since then, Mr. Beasley has purchased a nine acre track facing Dalton Hollow Road and is wanting to cut the rear of that nine acre track off to sort of square up in thoroughbred right there along that pinch in the road frontage. And so he's looking to rezone an acre and a half basically right there in that corner. And uh, we'll be glad to try to answer any questions you might have there. So if, if I'm hearing you right, his current land is this triangle right here. And he's wanting to square that up because of this other land that he's purchased. That's correct. The current land is the land that sits along what you see as thoroughbred drive right there. He has that current land, which is parcel 16.19. Mm -hmm. And then he's, whoops, we've got two 16.19s but anyway uh he's looking to add that acre and 4500s that's highlighted right there in okay. the middle of the drawing okay. i said to it that. backwards so he owns this and this this triangle here would help to square that in though. that's correct okay despite me does everybody understand what we're talking about okay sir Ms. Harper, you're going to have to hit that button, buddy. 
1.45 values. Yes, sir. That's what he's wanting to uh, have rezoned and add to his current, that bigger track down there. Take a minute to look at this. And if you come up with any questions for Jim, please let me know. Do we have any questions for Mr. Karma? All right. If not, we'll move on to Keelan. Um, so what I've included in this uh, packet is just some context for this property again. Um, so this is uh, 1.45 acres that uh, I believe has already been added to the 16.19 track. Is that correct? So it's not a free floating lot. Well, I mean, it hasn't been added as of yet. Mr. Beasley owns all of it. He currently owns the whole thing. He owns all the nine acres plus everything that you see along thoroughbred right there. Okay. And he owns the the property that this section, the tracks that this section cuts off. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. He owns he owns everything that this is coming off of and everything that it is connecting to. Okay, excellent. Um, so these the surrounding properties are zoned A1 agriculture r1 residential and c2 highway commercial and that c2 is um uh, abutting the lot that it's going to be added to um so the property is within the hartsville trousdale water and sewer utility district it, there appears to be a six inch water line that's on thoroughbred lane um and there's not sewer the majority of this property is located in the zone a special flood hazard there is sewer. There is sewer because I helped sewer? Okay. line for it. I remember there was I, I believe, one. That I believe your sewer map is outdated because there's 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 sewer barrier. all up and down thoroughbred right there. Okay, I feel like I remember that from the last time thoroughbred lane was up here. Um, so there does not appear to be any significant slopes. However, the area proposed to be rezoned is largely located outside of the flood, the special flood hazard area. Um, so thoroughbred lane is a minor street i've included the a1 as well as the r1 residential district information in here um so based on the uh minimum lot area and the lot density requirements the proposed area to be rezoned is roughly 1.45 acres and this would allow for a maximum density of four single family lots with water and sewer um or three duplex lots with water and sewer Okay, thank you. Same. Um, Miss Keelan's covered everything that I would okay have. If anybody has questions, I'll okay. be. All right. Any questions for Keelan? Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. So, if Mr. Beasley decided not to combine the two tracks, if we just rezone this one. He can't do that because there's no road frontage to it, correct? So there's no way of this one piece of track just being a floating R1. Well, yeah, you're, it, I mean, yeah. There's it no can be a floating R1, but it would be the back portion of the lots that this piece is coming from would be zoned R1. So it's not currently a subdivided individual lot, but the the plat that you see with the, the yellow boundaries, that is just a, an exhibit to show you the boundary that they're rezoning. That's not what the lots actually look like currently. So are we then rezoning the full nine acres? No, no it's just rezoning it's this. 1.49. Yep, only rezoning this 1.4, but with the understanding that that oh. 1.4 will then be added to the neighboring lot. So it'll require the subdivision process to cut that off and add it to the other lot after this there there's a provided legal description for that 1.45 if approved the legal description is what you're approving is that piece so then there's really no adverse reason to not rezone this to add it to his property 
being everything on that side of the creek is already R1 or was A1 that hadn't been changed over that we've been making corrections on the last couple of months, correct? I think that's right. Correct. Other questions for either Jim or Ms. Keelan? Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to send it with a favorable approval. Have a motion by Mr. Thomas to send this to the County Commission with a favorable recommendation. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Noller. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Next on our agenda is a final plat approval by Fleming Homes LLC for the Freedom Farm subdivision of 16.21 acres on Tempelo Road and Bass Road for, a six, for six lots, and this is located in the 5th Civil District. Is there anyone here to speak for uh, Fleming Homes? Yeah, just push the button there. Gotcha. Thanks, sir. My name is Bo Ag. I'm the surveyor in charge of this project. Thank you. Okay. So do, do so this plant is a uh, in your packet. Oh, that's the one we got updated. Okay, so you, the, the plat handed out before the meeting is the updated one? Yes, to my knowledge, everything's been updated accordingly. Thank you, Ms. Rosalie. Don't see it got it right that time. <laughs> this is the second part of a other plat that we've already approved, isn't it? Uh, is that right, Sam? Maybe. This is the final plat. We've seen the sketch plat and the preliminary plat the last couple of months. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. So we started off with a sketch plat, plat and then a preliminary plat. And now uh, Fleming Homes is back for final plat approval. And this is the plat that'll be recorded. This is the last time it'll be seen. So. So Mr. Chairman, um, looking at this plat, I noticed that uh, lot five's got two soil sample areas. I'm assuming the, the one to the north there is the one for, is that gonna be for lot four, sir? Yes, the one to the west would be for lot four, correct. So lot four didn't have any land that would perk? That's why we put on lot five. So there's going to be a right of way for that. Yes. It'll be a easement. Easement. Yeah. Okay, guys. Anybody got any questions? All right, Ms. Keelan. So I don't have a ton more to add for this one. Um, like we've said, we have seen this one the last couple of months, um, but it is for a six lot subdivision uh, located on Templo Road um, that consists of approximately 16.21 acres total and is zoned R1. The surrounding properties are zoned for agricultural uses. Um, within the R1, the minimum lot area for a property with access to public water, but without public wastewater is an acre and all of the uh, l proposed lots are above an acre. Um, but in your packets, there is one remaining comment. However, that comment has been addressed on the um, updated plat. So there are no outstanding plat uh, comments and staff does recommend approval. So the fire hydrant is part of this updated plan. Okay. Yes. So, 
if you're looking at Keelan's written statement, the only issue she had seen was the location of proposed fire hydrant or distance, and that is provided in the updated plat that was handed out tonight. So that's there. You got anything for this? Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, anybody have any questions for Keelan or for this gentleman here? Yes, sir. So is there no other way to cut up four and five to give four its own? Uh, per the developer's request, we did it that way, and it meets TDEC standards and planning commission standards. I can say I just don't like the idea of someone else's sewage being dumped on my property as a that's the only only concern I, I have. You don't buy that lot thing. Um, with, with, with the statement about the, um, the septic areas, just remind everybody that with like, um, uh, Gene's property out there on 231, there, there's a lot of, uh, septic site areas that are shared through easements. Um, and actually we have to do it probably less than other counties. Um, uh, we, are favorable with our soil here, thankfully, but there are certain areas that are just too rocky and there, there will be cases where they will share, but we have approved them in the past. So keep that in mind. It's not ideal, but it, it does happen. Questions? Would anyone like to make a motion? Ms. Nall? I'll make a motion to approve favorable. Well, it don't have to be fair. It's not going anywhere but here. Have a motion from Mr. Nolner to uh, approve this request. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Harper. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Thanks, sir. Next on our agenda is preliminary plat approval for Zach Taylor subdivision of 8.74 acres on Tempelo Road for six lots. And this is also located in the fifth civil district. Jim's gonna to speak to us about this one. Okay, uh, I'm assuming all of you have this in your packet. This is basically just due east of what you just looked at and across the road, okay? Zach Taylor has uh, about 50 or 60 acres right there. He's looking at cutting off the lower end into smaller lots in a hay field right there. And we'll be glad to try to answer any questions you might have there. Okay. So you can see from the surrounding property owners that Mr. Taylor owns the property to the left and he is wanting to cut off these six lots as Jim just stated. And uh, he's asking for preliminary plat approval. Any questions for Jim before we move on to Keelan? Yes, sir. So Jim, um, lot one, is that adjacent to the, the single wide trailer there or is that including? Just trying to get a reference of exactly where it's at. I'm not sure what single wide you're talking about. Um, now there is a out parcel that Zach doesn't own out to the west of this three or 400 feet that somebody else owns. I don't know where, there's no residential buildings on Zach's land. Um, the only trailer I can think of that you might be speaking of is there's about an acre that somebody else owns out in the middle of his frontage. That may be what you're talking about, but that's to the west of this probably 500 feet or so. Other questions for Jim? Jim, what about the soils? I don't see any reference or it's too small. I can't read it. 
No, this is this, once again, this is a preliminary plat. Soils have not got finalized. You will see this plat again, in which case, I mean, if if they don't get the soils worked out, this may change. It may drop to four lots or something like that. But we're just this is what we're shooting for, and our soils are in process. Gotcha. Thank you. Other questions? All right, Ms. Keelan. All right, so this is another one I don't have terribly much to add. So this is, uh, once again, a six lot subdivision that is located on Templo Road, uh, consists of about 8.74 acres total and is zoned R1. Um, the surrounding properties are used for agricultural and residential uses. Um, so for this property, the minimum lot area uh, for any parcel with access to public water, but without public wastewater is an acre and all of the proposed lots are over an acre. Um, and then all of the plat issues have been cleared up previously. So there are no outstanding comments and staff does recommend approval. Any questions for Keelan? Okay, do I have a motion? Marianne? I have a motion by Ms. McCall to approve this. Do I have a second? Mr. Harper, seconds. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. It is approved. Next on our agenda is a preliminary subdivision plat approval for the Darrell Carmen Estate on Highway 141 North, which is 22.31 acres for 16 lots. And this one is in the fourth civil district. And Jim's still up there, so we'll go to Jim. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm up here the rest of the night, so. That's okay. <laughs> anyway, this is the Daryl Carmen property. We rezoned this back three or four months ago. Once again, this is a preliminary plat. Um, there won't be any soil shown on it. We're in the process of investigating all that at the moment. This subdivision will require the installation of a fire hydrant along the existing six inch line that is sitting uh, up and down 141 North right there. And we'll try to answer any questions you might have. Okay, so what they're asking for is preliminary subdivision approval. Questions for Jim? Okay, Caitlin. All right, so this is a uh, preliminary plat once again. So this is for 16 lots um, located on Highway 141 North. Um, it consists of approximately 22.31 acres and is zoned R1. The surrounding properties are zoned for agricultural uses. And like we've already mentioned, there is a six inch water line that's located along the margin of Highway 141 North there, um, but sewer is not currently available. Um, so once again, with the R1 with uh, water, but without sewer, the minimum lot size is an acre and all of the proposed lots are greater than an acre. Um, there were just a couple of remaining comments on this uh, plat. You know, we've been going back and forth a couple of times. Um, so the first one is that the subdivision uh, is requested to have a name beyond the estate of Daryl Carmen. Uh, that would be sufficient to identify it uh, as a unique subdivision different from any other estate of Daryl Carmen's. Um, we also request that they include the width of the stream identified. They include the center line, but we'd just like to know the width of that easement there. Um, we've also uh, requested that the topographic contours be at verticals of no more than two feet uh, per the, the zoning ordinance and that they include the areas to be used for sewage disposal. So is that what you say staff will provide a recommendation at the meeting? Do you have one? Uh, staff's recommendation would be based on the applicant's uh, thoughts on those comments. Okay, that's a good political way of saying it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, <laughs> do you want me to address the thoughts on the comments or would you like to take it? Well, I would just figure this is preliminary that you would take care of all of that as you move. Well, I mean, process. okay. So let's, let's just address the first comment. Um, okay. The naming of the plat. I mean, 
we've used people's names for 50 years. I mean, we just did one for Zach Taylor. I don't see that it's a big issue to put somebody's first and last name as the name of the plat. That's my personal preference. If y'all want to bat that around, I'm fine with that. As far as showing the width of the stream, we can locate the top of the bank and show where the top of the bank is down through there. The two foot contours, this is especially on the east side of the road, those are five foot contours already on there. Two foot contours is gonna be a blanket. And once again, this is just a preliminary for you to look at. They won't be on the final plat at all. And I don't really remember what the, oh, the, the septic, the septic's in process right now. It will not be on the preliminary plat either. So anyway, that's glad to talk over any of it with you, but that's my thoughts on the comments. Okay. Questions for Jim? Yes, sir. So Jim, um, in the issue she listed, it's um, having the name of the estate of, and I can understand uh, Keeley's concerned of, you know, any other estate. Would you have a problem just calling it Daryl Carmen subdivision? No. Okay, that's easy. Other questions? Hearing none, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second by Mr. Noller? Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Next is, I believe, Jim again. Site plan approval for Scotty Enoch on West Main Street. 63,924 and a half square feet for four triplexes totaling 12 units in the seventh district. Jim? Okay, so Mr. Enoch owns uh, roughly an acre and a half up there. This is as you're going up the hill past the post office and you start to make the turn there and climb the little steeper part right there before you get to the old laundromat area where it's been cleared off right there. They, he has an acre and a half right there and he's looked, it's zoned R3. He's looking at putting in uh, four triplexes. And I think that basically sums it up. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer. Yes, sir. That's correct. Where they've, uh, if you've been up through there here lately, you see where they've started clearing off the land right there, just past the, on the left, just past the old white house that has the big set of steps down to the road right there. So th this is where they've been clearing off for the last few weeks. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Sure. Um, Jim, as they've been clearing off, I've noticed how steep the bank is on the be the west side going up to Scott. Um, are they planning on pushing that back a little further to make room for that uh, that one development? You know, I one think I think what you're looking at is the steepness of the bank as it goes up right there to Scott Avenue. Yes. I don't think they're going to have to get on that real steep part to do anything that they're looking at doing. And so there's not going to be any access from Scott to this? No, sir. That's not practical okay. as far as as far as driving access. Now they could go, they could go in, they might have to go into the water line and the sewer line and stuff like that with utilities. But as far as entrance, it's all gonna come in from down below. Other questions? Same? As you all think about this and look at this, um, Keep in mind, there's 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 some discussion. The east unit on the map next to the drainage area, um, there might be some need um, as site site work gets done that the that unit right there might need to shift further to the south, and the drainage might flip in front of it. So, with whatever approval, just keep that in mind that uh, maybe add. Uh, that is an allowed use based on um, site prep. I would also 
just quickly if uh, if that is a uh, condition that's included in any approval of this, I would uh, request that the uh, buildings must be 30 feet apart. So this is already slightly close. Um, so I would I would include that in that motion. You want to go ahead and give your sense. So um, this development, it's uh, like we've said, a 12 unit multifamily development on West Main Street. Uh, it does consist of about 1.46 acres and is zoned R3. This is one that we, uh, with these two properties, we've rezoned um, fairly recently. The surrounding properties are zoned for residential uses and the property has access to a six inch water line and an eight inch sewer line. Uh, the sewer is Long Stott Avenue. Um, I've included the uh, R3 uh, bulk requirements and the permitted uses. So multifamily dwellings are permitted by use right within the R3. Um, and the bulk standards, so for multifamily dwellings, the minimum lot area is 10,000 uh, square and 800 square feet with a minimum lot area of 36 square feet per dwelling unit, or sorry, 3,600 square feet per dwelling unit. Permitted density is 12 units an acre. Um, this is above, an, uh, above one acre and 12 units, so it does meet that requirement. Um, there is also buffer requirements that are required for multifamily, um, and a 10-foot ten, ten buffer is proposed to be provided along the property lines that abut the residentially zoned property to the north and to the east. Um, so I would like to note that, uh, as it's shown on Tennessee Property Viewer, which I'm very aware is not uh, as updated as it we would love it to be, uh, parcels 15 and 16.02 have not previously been combined. Um, so the setbacks and the buffer requirements as the property stands now do apply between the two lots. Um, that's not sure if you guys remember from the rezoning. So that is actually two lots there the, where the drainage and one of those parcels where it kind of cuts off, that is, I believe, currently a separate lot, um, which as we've discussed in the past, unless they're combined, it could be sold. And then if there is a property that's built over the property line, or a, sorry, a building that's built over the property line, that could become an issue at that point. Um, so I would recommend if it hasn't been done already that any recommendation of approval or approval with conditions include the condition that a, a consolidation plat be recorded for these two properties. Okay. Um, I just, Jim, are they planning on doing that? Um, that lot got added in late and I hadn't really thought through that, but she's correct and that won't be any issue. We'll take care of that with Sam before we pull any permits okay. or anything like that. Okay. So uh, regarding any um, uh, items for regarding the site plan, um, so like we've said, we would I would highly caution that they the condition that they be combined lot 15 and 16.02 be combined um, before any buildings are approved. Uh, once again, this this property is called site plan for Scotty Enoch or Enoch. Uh, we would recommend that they it has a more unique name that allows it to be distinguished from any other site plans that Scotty may do. Uh, we also have required that they show the distance between all of the buildings. The buildings may be uh, located no closer than 30 feet. And I added that one specifically because um, the two southernmost buildings are just scale. Like if you look at the scale, they look fairly close. Um, so we would want to just ensure that that is being um, adhered to. Um, and then we would also recommend or request that they include information de detailing the proposed HOA or the maintenance organization that'll be responsible for the common areas as well as the common elements such as the sign and the mail kiosk. Okay, let me address that real quick. This is this is for Mr. Enix. This is an apartment complex. So there will not be an HOA. He will be the sole owner or it will be transferred to somebody else in as a unit, it's not gonna be sold out. If it is ever done anything like that with, it will have to come back before y'all. Um, as to Keelan's other comments, I don't think we have any significant issues with anything that she said. 
Okay. Mr. Thomas. So Jim, on the, uh, the 10 foot buffer between the uh, other properties, uh, do you have any problems with that? No, we've got that on there. Okay. It's uh, everything except the road is labeled with a 10 foot buffer area. Okay. Other questions for either Keelan or Jim or Sam? Okay. And the mailbox cluster, Jim, I, I'm sorry, I just can't read this something this small. Where's I understand. It's it's proposed up there at the end. That's sort of a little grass area in the middle of the big parking area right there. It's proposed up there. And it may not even be on your drawing. I'm sorry. We've made edits probably since you had since your drawings were ran. Okay. It's kind of in that looks like a house in the center. I thought that was a building at first until I made out mail. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to start bringing y'all magnifying glasses so y'all right. can see this stuff. These, these eyes aren't that great. <laughs> I thought it was just me, though. <laughs> Other questions? Okay. Do I have a motion? Mr. Thomas? You didn't turn it on, Mr. Thomas. I make a motion that we send this on with approval. No, it, make a motion to approve. To approve contingent or recommendations. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second for approval uh, on contingent upon uh, the meeting the requirements of uh, that Keelan has proposed. And Jim has said there are no issues. Do it. Everybody ready for the question? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, please say no. I did get a second, didn't I? That's what I thought. Okay. All right, let's see here. Next is a site plan approval for George M. James and Lisa L. James on Highway 231 South of 10 acres for four one-story buildings. And this is in the sixth civil district. Mr. and Mrs. James here to. Uh, yes, they are. You in defer the, to your. Yes, they are in the, they are in the audience if we, uh, if we need to pass any questions on to them, but I'll be representing it as far as from a surveyor standpoint. Uh, the Jameses are looking at putting four, um, three to 4,000 square feet buildings at the rear of its 10 acres. I think y'all rezoned this back several months ago, and uh, that's what they're looking at doing. I think this is in uh, commercial zone, C1 zone out in the county, and we'll be glad to try to answer any questions you might have. Is everybody familiar with this lot? So right next to the Marble uh, Company, you know the big barn. They've they've been doing all that dirt work, and they've got the uh, the new fence right, up right next to the that uh, granite company. Yeah, the the, the, the Marble. The, okay. Yeah, the granite uh, okay. company. They've got that dirt work that they've been doing, and there's a new fence. Um, and I believe there was a uh, a skid steer that was for sale out there in front of it for a while but that's that lot uh, when they came forward for the rezone and they showed us a display of their future goals and uh, this is uh, similar to the display just without all the extra buildings so you would come off the entrance would be off of highway 231 it, yes, sir. The entrance is already in existence right there. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I, pa I pass it quite regularly, but the entrance is already in existence right there, and they've already got it started going back. And so what they're looking at doing is basically the rear portion of what they they brought forth a sort of a site plan sketch when y'all were doing the rezone that had more buildings on it than this. But they're okay. just at this time, they're just looking at doing the rear portion back there just to get started. Oh, okay. All right. I understand. All right, questions for Jim, guys? Mr. Thomas? Just because I, my eyes aren't any better than anyone else's, it's just these four buildings to the very rear of the plat, correct, Jim? Yes, sir, that's correct. There's four buildings right there that set sold in a cluster together. 
the ones to the rear are labeled as uh, 30 by 100s and the ones toward the highway are labeled as 40 by 100s. But yeah, there's just four buildings right there in a the cluster together. And they already exist? No, sir. These are proposed oh, okay. to be okay. to okay. be built. That's what I thought. It kind of threw me there just a minute. Other questions? All right, Keelan. So, um, like we've said, this is a, a proposed development of four one story buildings. Uh, on the property that it unaddressed property on highway uh, 231 south the property consists of approximately 10 acres and is zone c1 uh commercial there is a typo there i apologize um the surrounding uh, properties are zoned for commercial and agricultural uses and this property does not have access to public water or sewer um, so I've included some notes about the C1 general commercial district here. So the minimum land area for properties with access to public water without access to public water or sewer is three acres. The property far exceeds that with 10. Um, so we've also included the off street parking requirement, which is that there shall be uh, five and a half spaces for each 1000 feet square feet of gross leasable area. Um, and I believe since this, does it still contain 14,000 square feet total? We haven't altered the buildings there. Yes, that would be correct. It's still yes, 14, that would be 000. correct. And once again, I don't know what I don't know what you're looking at right there. Do they have revised? They have revised copies. Okay. So we have added in the necessary parking spaces to accommodate the requirement that you put forth right there. Yes. And just while I'm on the microphone, it does have a 12 inch water line sitting in front of the property. That's about to answer. You're going to use outhouses. <laughs> um, yes. So uh, for five and a half uh, spaces per thousand feet, that does require then uh, 77 parking spaces. Uh, so this property would also require the landscaping buffer strip between any residential or agriculturally zoned properties. This site does abut agricultural and, and commercially zoned property, and there is a buffer located along the property line that is abutting that agricultural land. Um, so as far as the site plan goes, there are a couple of outstanding comments. Sorry. Um, so once again, we request that the development have a unique name. It's currently called Site Plan for George M. James and wife Lisa L. James. Um, we would just want to be able to distinguish that one from any other site plans this couple may do in the future. Um, so we also request they show the topographic contours at intervals of five feet. I believe currently from what I saw, they're at four and six feet. They're kind of funky. Um, but uh, so we also request that they make note of uh, the number of required and provided parking spaces, as well as location of any ADA accessible parking spaces. We request that they include the dimensions of the off street loading and unloading zones. Um, and then I did have just a sort of general design question about the loading zones. So they are, they're kind of hard to see on the small plats that you guys have, but they're located at the, the furthest point back on the um, sort of larger parking lot that's located to the rear of the property near the septic soils area. There are uh, two loading zones there. Um, so I just had a question about how exactly those would be. If someone's unloading or loading merchandise, how are they accessing those buildings in the front if there's walkways or anything? Um, and then also we've requested that they just note the parking lot surface material. Okay, I don't know that I have a, a great um, qualms with with any of that. I mean, if we're going to get into this naming convention, I need to know where the box is, okay? As far as this has to be named this, this has to be named that kind of thing. 
no big deal. I just need some direction there. Um, as far as the um, the loading, we can put that anywhere on the thing. We've we've put it out there. He has a massive parking area designed in the rear. I mean, any of that could be loading. Once again, this whole complex is off street. I mean, the, the, this is a this is a private drive that's going into these, so it's it's not really a public street down through there. So. We're flexible to put it anywhere that anywhere that the the Jameses want to put the to put the loading zone at. Um, but as far as labeling and everything, that's not a there's no issues there. So is there because it looks to me like the the buildings towards the front towards the road are sep are only connected to that back parking area by going out to the driveway and like going back up. Is there any walkway or any way for those those two buildings in the front to utilize those uh, loading zones in the back? Well, other than coming up there, the respective roads right there, I would say no, according to this plan right here. However, Mr. James is going to have to he's going to have to look at these building designs and the, the loading zones or the entrances to the building will be determined on where the doors get put in the building and stuff like that. He will make sure that there's access to each of the buildings for loading purposes. Sam, is that an amount of uh, amendment after approval that you are comfortable with double checking at the time for building permits? Is this preliminary? Does it have to come back? This is a site plan, so we will only see it once. That's what I was thinking. Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable working everything through with Mr. Carmen. Yes, sir. Jim, just for clarification, um, so the two buildings to the the road side of, of this plan, those are two separate buildings separated by the that gap in the middle, correct? Yes, sir. So then the one to the rear, that's all one building or is it also separated in the middle? No, I'm not following you there. Yeah, I, can, I, see what you're you? I see what you're getting at. Looks like one long building. It's because it's a. Oh, it's got the double oh, parking right. yeah, lot that, lines that, on that's it. That's grass. Sorry. Okay. That's, but sorry about that. When I made that edit for the parking to add the parking, it makes that look like a building. No, that's 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 a grass strip in between the buildings there. Okay. So then that could be used as the loading unloading for the. That's ones very the correct. It could be. It could be filled in with gravel or pavement and and uh, been used as the loading and unloading area. And then, Mr. Chairman, one other question um, or comment here. Uh, I can understand Jim's um, statement about the, the naming of them. Um, is that something we need to talk about at a different time? or Because I, I understand Keeling's point of wanting it, a specific name on it so we can distinguish them. But I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know, uh, let's just use uh, Mr. and Ms. James. They're sitting there. We use them as an example. They may be back here in six months with something else and it be Mr. and Mrs. James again. And I would think that when it's filed away, it needs to be differentiated. So it, so we'll, it, they can have as many as they want, but they're not all named the same and it'd be hard to find and that type of thing. Is that what you're? Yeah. So just like a little bit of clarity. So my issue isn't necessarily the use of the names. It's more that it's called site plan four. These two, if it's called like the James site plan, that's something that next time they could have something called the George site plan, something like that. It's site plan four dictates more the owner of the property and who the, the site plan is being created for and less the, the name that this, this development itself will go forward with and be searchable and things like that in the future. Is that all right, Jim? Would I? I, I don't have a problem with it but once again it doesn't really get but anyway that's probably a discussion for a different day okay i don't think with this one that it's going to be an issue we can we can come up with something that the, oh, the Jameses I, I don't think will it's be an issue about this one in particular uh i mean i see where she's coming from and i i, I could see that it could get 
as as busy as this county is getting, it could become an issue in the future. You run up to that. You run into that same situation with names also, or just as far as in Sumner County, they just run out of words, basically. I'm sure. Could you, could you add a number to it and I'm sure. make it be suffice? With the same name, with a number. I think we just need to let, we need to discuss it and let Jim know what, what we expect. I think that's all he's asking for. I all don't right, have a Jim. problem with that. I think we can, I think we can get through to tonight without having a big discussion about it. Okay. Right. All right. Questions for Keela? Uh, did you get through? I'm sorry. I may have cut you off. No, that was it. I was just going to say, um, for site plans, that naming convention is is more internal. It's subdivisions that I'm not sure if, if they can record subdivisions with numbers in the name. That would be something that we'd have to ask the, uh, the okay. Register of Deeds about. Right. So remember now, this is a site plan approval. It will not come back before us. So any of the site plan issues there that Keelan has proposed, you might want to include in, your, in any motion uh, if it's for approval or anything. Just one question. Um, we don't see a lot of um, residential type um, places being built on C1. And I can't, I'm, I know it's legal. I just can't find it in our uses. This isn't residential. No, it's commercial. And I'm looking at C1 and I see nothing about residential in it. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, where it says C1 residential at the top, that was a typo. Okay, okay. Sorry. Okay. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, let's make sure we know what we're voting on. as a good catch. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that on contingent of um, complying with that's resolving the issues that Keeling has put forward, um, that we approve the site plan. Okay. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Harper. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. It does, it is approved. And then last on our agenda is site plan approval. Well, it's not actually last. We have a discussion topic, so don't get too excited. Site plan approval for advanced propane on Broadway of 1.93 acres for two propane tank storage, uh, then say what well, I assume units or whatever. And this is in the seventh district. Jim? Okay, so this is the vacant lot that sets south of the old Fred's building, Home Pro, or the- Lester Parker's old property. Yeah, I was gonna say, I've been around here a while, but it's been, a, I don't really remember what buildings were there, but there used to be buildings there. But um, anyway, it's a vacant lot now, and Advanced Propane is looking at putting two um, propane tanks on the corner of it to, uh, have, to limit trips to Lebanon back and forth, more as a storage, um, bulk storage area. And so that's what we're looking at doing. We'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. So all they're wanting to do is put two large propane tanks that their trucks can come fill up at. As yes, sir. That's all they're doing. Um, you see the fence around the, around the tanks that's required by the state. They're required to have a six foot chain link fence around the prop, around the, the tank area there. And um, yes, there's seven and a half feet wide or right yeah, across and 70 foot long. Um, I think it's all that I see on there, but anyway, yes, that's what they're I looking at doing. I didn't even just be sitting out there. That's all that they're wanting to put on there at this time. That's correct. That's all this site plan is for is for those two tanks. Anything okay. that they do in the future on this property will have to come back in front of you. All right. So I'm showing my age, but that is the old Lester Parker property. There was a car lot there up at the road for many years. You young people won't know anything about that. There yes, was a, a welding uh, shop there at one time. At one it? time. That's right. Uh, 
for your those your daddy will remember that for those that's not track and it's the property that has the fill on it right now there's been fill dumped questions for jim Kayla. Great. So, um, like we've already said, this is a development of two propane tanks on undressed Broadway Street. Uh, the property is roughly 1.93 acres and it is zoned C1 commercial. The surrounding properties across the streets, because it is abutted by streets on all sides, are also zoned for commercial. Um, so within the C1 central commercial, this is propane storage is not necessarily a called out use as we've learned not all uses are called out specifically, um, but essential services for utility substations, distribution and collection lines, pumping facilities and public right of way and automotive, uh, as well as automotive service and repair, including the sale of gas, oil, tires and other goods. Um, those were the two closest uses I could find within the zoning ordinance that have any relation to storage of flammable liquids. Um, and both of those are permitted by right use within the C1 zoning district. Um, so I just wanted to make that abundantly clear. Uh, so as far as the site plan uh, go itself goes, um, I did have a question about the, there are two, um, contours that are listed both say uh 464 so i was just wondering yes i noticed that this evening i have revised copies here i noticed that that after i had sent you i had labeled two of them incorrectly or the same thing so the 468 is up at the up toward broadway right there and the 464 is down there where it's listed um the just as far as flood elevation flood elevation on the property is 468 they will have to elevate these tanks um, a foot above that. So these tanks will not be sitting on the ground. These tanks will be these tanks will be four or five foot in the air as far as the bottom of them. Yeah, so that actually leads me really well into some of my other questions. So um, just really quick, I've also requested that um, there is a requirement that no point of access may be located within 20 feet of the right of way line of a public intersection. So we would just request that that um, distance from the driveway to the corner of that property uh, be listed just so we can okay, make that's, sure. Okay, that that's, that's not a problem. Yeah. We've, we've moved it from where we had it, but it's not a problem to list the distance up there. I believe it meets it. I just would like to, to confirm that on the, the site plan. Um, so we've also recommended or requested that they include the height of the propane tanks. That's the maximum. So we have the minimum here. We'd want to know the maximum of how tall they would be. Um, and then the other question uh, is, will the driveway and the area underneath the tanks or what the tanks will be anchored okay. to? As, as far as the height, I mean, I'm saying they're going to put it right there at that 469 contour, and then it's going to be that seven and a half foot above that. It's, it's a round tank, so it's going to be seven and a half foot above that 469 contour as far as the actual um what the driveway area is around that they're going to start out with gravel till it gets packed down but they'll be looking at putting a hard surface on it as soon as it gets settled and everything do you know if that's true for underneath the tanks as well will the tanks be anchored to concrete yes they will be anchored to concrete Okay, so with that in mind, then these property, this property is located partially within the um, flood A zone, but that's not really where these are proposed. Uh, where the pro the propane tanks are proposed is within the flood A E zone. Um, so there is a requirement that uh, trying to always trying to describe FEMA in a non super technical way, but. Um, so within these areas, any uh, ground coverage has to has to include a drainage plan or a, a flood plan that includes uh, calculations that prove that the addition of that that impermeable surface will not increase the flood flooding in that area above one foot. Um, so if those areas underneath the tanks and that driveway are proposed to be paved and impermeable, then we would need to have some sort of engineering. Okay, that's 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 not a problem. Um, we can do that at the. Uh, um, we can provide that if we're looking at doing that, and it's going to be something that's impermeable. We'll we will address that with Sam before the the permits are pulled. 
and that was the remainder of my comments. You say the driveway once the gravel's packed down and stuff. Yes, that's that's their intention is once the the gravel's packed down to come in there and pave it or concrete it. Yeah, let's just let's not pack it down for years. <laughs> yes, sir, I understand that. Okay, because that's happened. Other que uh, questions for either Keelan, Jim, or any or Sam? Did you have something? She pretty much hit everything. No, the back for everything had covered. Okay. So, Jim, what we're looking at is pretty much the same um, large tank distribution as they have at uh, the railroad going into Gallatin. I would say that would be a On fair assessment. Yes, sir. Yeah. My discussion with the owner is it's going to be almost exactly like that. Okay. Y'all are all familiar with that, aren't you? Going in, Gall where you turn to go up, uh, was it Airport Drive? It's right there. Other questions, comments? Hearing none, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Nala. If I may, is that a contingent upon the comments or is that approved as it? Very good point. Well, <laughs> the, the, only, the only comment that, uh, that wasn't answered was the uh, just having the overhaul uh, height of the tanks put on. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll do it with the uh, a motion to approve uh, with the contingencies of the issues being resolved that uh, have been stated. Under site plan issues. So I have a motion to approve contingent upon the issues under site plan issues that are listed uh, being uh, satisfactorily met. Mr. Nollard, you second that? All right. Do we all understand the motion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. All right. Can I have 30 seconds, Take Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Just something to throw out for y'all to chew on. We, like on the Scotty Enix site plan that we were doing where she said the buildings need to be 30 foot apart. I know y'all have got something in some rig somewhere that says that, but we need to think through that, okay? Because we technically have a 10 foot side setback. And if I put a triplex on one boundary line and then another landowner owns another boundary line, they have the right to come within 10 foot of that. That only leaves us 20 foot between the buildings. So we've got an issue there somewhere that needs to be hashed out. Can you look into that? Good point, yeah. Sam, y'all going to look into you and Keely. Sure. So thank you for bringing that to our attention, Jim. So for either Sam or Keeling, is that 30 foot? Is that something that the county puts in place or is that a, a fire code between buildings? Uh, Sam can probably answer this much better than I can, but um, the 30 foot... Uh, requirement is within the zoning ordinance. So that is something that's imposed by the city and the county. I believe from my experience, uh, 10 feet separation is required without a two hour firewall uh, between buildings. I believe they're only required to be 10 foot apart, but that 30 feet is directly from the, the zoning regulations. From our zoning regulations. So it's something we do. She she's correct. Um, as they get closer, different fire requirements come in, involved. Um, so yes, the, if we were to place them ten foot apart, five feet apart, uh, there's a whole lot of code things that we have to do to make that work. But, because thinking back to what Jim's saying on that particular property, if he does have to shift that one building to the south, it will then pull it would potentially pull it closer to the other building. Would he need to come in and get a variance then for being closer than 30 foot? That is something that would require a variance from the BCA. 
we, we'll we'll look at it as we get out there. We're, it's my concern discussing with the owner is the water control um, and getting it done properly with the topography that's there. Um, I just wanted to make sure the motion was allowable to a little bit of shifting to get it done right without him having to come back forward with a change. So, but yes, all that stuff will be looked at. So is that a variance that we can give at this body or does it have to be given through BZA for the 30 for BZA thing? If, if, if the potential that it does get closer um, all variances go through the board zone appeals. So I don't think there's any variances that this body can approve. Is that, and that right? This board can approve special exceptions from the subdivision regulations, but anything within the zoning ordinance is required to go That's, through the board okay. of zoning appeals. Okay. All right. All right. Last on our agenda is discussion topic land use definition table uh, who's the speaker on this i'm, I'm gonna let keelan go over it but this is uh what we were discussing about um previous issue that we had several months ago this this will allow remind uh, me of the issue uh the core remember it i don't the, the, the Corey issue where it was not listed as a listed use or anywhere in the, in the ordinance, there was You're no the Corps of Engineers, the, the Corey, Rock Corey. Oh, 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 I, I misunderstood the Corey uh, issue. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I got you. I, I told all y'all that I was working on something um, to have brought forward ISGNRC to look in um, the best method uh, of getting the situation fixed for all further issues with anything that would come forward. Um, and Greater National Regional Council has proposed uh, this method of doing it. There is one for the county and one for the city in here uh, for y'all to review. Um, but it, it puts everything into categories, uh, makes it easier to determine, and then gives a, um, a method or a route to go forward when it's not a listed use. Okay. Okay. So what you've got us here is a, uh, where we can look at it as a table, a reference table to go too quickly to see what's approved and what's permitted, what's special exception and things like that. And we can look at it quickly. Am I correct? That, that's correct, but the, the, the key thing is, let me find it here. I can get it, Sam. Okay, she, look, Keelan's yeah, going to go over you, Sam. <laughs> um, So yeah, the the change would list these the uses then as a table versus the um, sort of paragraph list style that they're currently in. Um, it does uh divide them up by residential community facility commercial and industrial uh agricultural and industrial along the that first column and then you can see for each of the zoning districts whether it's permitted or uh permitted by special exception um but we've also included this sort of paragraph to be included before the the table in both of the zoning resolutions um and it pretty much what it does is it explains what the permitted uses are kind of how to use the table where to look for for kind of more information on the uses um and then it specifies that p is permitted by right se is by special exception and prohibited uses are where there's an empty cell and then at the bottom there there is a, a sort of our key clause that says the table of uses does not necessarily include all possible land uses. Some uses may fall into more than one classification depending upon the use characteristics. Where there is a question concerning the appropriate activity classification for any use not listed as a use permitted by right, by accessory use, or by special exception in any zoning district listed on in this ordinance, the Board of Zoning Appeals shall make the determination based upon the characteristics of the unlisted use as defined within the North American Industry Classification <laughs> System, the NAICS. 
Um, so this is something we discussed internally within GNRC and with Sam uh, to try to figure out what the best way was for uses that come before us that are not explicitly listed anywhere and have any degree of, of question about them or concern about the use. Um, so this, this clause would then require that the BZA be the one to make that determination. And that is because it's a, a quasi-judicial branch. So their decisions are sort of uh, our law you know, they're, they're punishable within the court system. And so that would be a more severe um, requirement. It's also a zoning ordinance requirement. So any variance goes to the Board of Zoning Appeals anyways. Um, so then we've also included this note that the BZA, and this is sort of just to give the BZA direction and how to make their determination, but it will be based upon the characteristics of the unlisted use as defined within the North American industry classification system. So that is the system that's widely used for the census and a bunch of other sort of government documents regarding industries and classifying uses. Um, and it breaks them down very, very detailed. So if you need to go very deep, you can go very deep. But uh, within those classifications, it includes uh, information on what that use should entail or is expected to entail. So things like, um, you know, expects high traffic or expects um, noise or things like that are included in that. So that'll, that would be a guide for the Board of Zoning Appeals to be able to, to determine where that, that use fits closest within to the other uh, uses that are allowed. And so there is one for Hartsville and there is one for Trousdale County. Um, they both say the same thing. They just have the different references based on the different um, uh, references within the, the zoning ordinances. Okay. And so what they want us to do is pass this on to the county commission. County commission sets our rules contrary to what some people don't understand. All we can do is apply the rules given to us by the county commission. We can't, we do not make up our own rules and we don't just vote ever how we want. We have to apply the rules the county commission has given us to go by. And I believe this is just a discuss discussion item. So right. well, no, I mean, eventually this is yes. gonna go to the county commission yes. for them. And hopefully it will, uh, how do I want to say it, impress upon the county commission the importance of all rezonings because once you rezone property to whatever, anything that's listed as acceptable in that zone can go. We've got to get away from saying, oh, Johnny Kerr, he's all right. He'll build what he wants. Now, Johnny Kerr might decide to sell that property, make some money, and then Joe Blow's got it now, and he may want to do something completely different. We don't think about that a lot much, you know, and and we we need to. Uh, and I've been saying this now for months, haven't I? <laughs> okay, so let's let's look at this, and uh, we can discuss it uh, tonight. If anybody's got anything, uh, you have had this for a while. Uh, we do have some county commissioners here. If they have questions or, and, or the mayor, uh, they may not be prepared for questions or anything. And I can understand that. But if they have anything on their mind, just raise your hand and we'll be glad to try to answer it. Anybody got any questions or discussion at this time? Yes, sir. Has this been run by the uh, county attorney yet? Uh I will need to check to see if he's in the email chain. I have sent him several of these as options for us to be looking at. Um, but like I've told you before, without staring at it, I'm not going to say yes or no on it, but I believe so. And the reason I ask is my, my concern with, I, I love the idea of the table. Um, that last paragraph and that last sentence there where it kind of holds us to that classification system. Um, 
you know, one of the arguments that I made during um, the quarry situation was they brought up a national, you know, standard for, um, oh, dense population, which doesn't apply to Trousdale County because their the, the national standard for that is the whole county. Um, so when we make an ordinance saying in a less diver, you know, less developed area, we mean compared to the rest of the county, um, I would be concerned that that might kind of limit us and, and cause some issues there. Good. One, definitely the county attorney needs to have this and can go over it. Uh, two, our county commissioners need to look at it and and have that, you know, and I know we've got several new ones, I think nine new ones. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, it just reinforces the, the uh, importance of all of that, right? I agree with you, 100%. I like yeah. the format though. That makes it a lot easier. When that 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 was I'm the thing that stood out to yeah. me. It's very a, difficult, I think. A county difficult. commissioner sitting there looking at a potential rezoning could look down through there real quick and see what what is all permitted within that zone, and then say, "Okay, now this is what they're asking for, but this is what could happen, and there's nothing we can do about it." You know. So the the biggest thing for me is I've, I've told y'all before and I've told the county commission, I don't think any one person should have the authority to make decisions on people's personal property. Um, so this placement in the board zone in appeals hands gives a group of individuals to look at it. Um, the board zone in appeals also has a different type of authority um they have to they can evaluate the property and they can agree or disagree so yes um they will be looking at that set standard uh from the naics um but they will also they as the board of zoning pills they can look at does it fit chris um, for you and mark and even jack the board of zoning appeals can add things to things that we can't like buffer zones, we we can requ we require buffer zones in certain instances, but that's because y'all have passed it for us. They have more authority to add things that this body just doesn't have. So I I wanted to make sure I mentioned that they yes they will be using the standard to say yes if they let's hypothetically say they believe it fits in the location. Now they have a standard that they're going off of to justify saying, yes, this does fit. Um, it says it fits and our examination of the property and the location, all that stuff also fits. So they can, they would make that judgment call as a judicial body saying, yes, we're going to allow this. Um, but the, the BZA, the way it, it's set up, they have that leeway to evaluate situations. Chris, that, you that and Mark, sound, yeah. Does that sound right, Keelan? Yeah, that's correct. The only other thing I would say is the the NAICS. Um, it's more about the use within the industry, so it's less based upon the like geog the geography of it. Um, and more, it's how the the census classifies different businesses within an industry. Okay. And I guess my concern was in the wording there. Um, you know, we've we've been putting a lot of focus as we're going through our ordinances of when that word shall comes up, and and in that last where it says that the bony the BZA shall make the determination based upon it. I, I was just I don't want to limit the BZA in our wording there. If it were to go forward, and, and that's why we're discussing this. If you well, in your uh, in your uh, study of this, and we'll bring it back next month, we may want to look at verbiage and 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 see. You know, uh, again, Mr. Beller may have some verbiage issues that he's going to want us to look at. Uh, the mayor may have some verbiage issues. Uh, you know, things like that. You know, that's not unusual. You know. 
I was going to ask Chris and Mark if y'all having a chart like this that you could refer to pretty quick. Don't y'all think that would be beneficial to you like that? If, if this looks agreeable to everybody um, and everybody says it is, then we'll go ahead and forward it to Brandon and have him do a thorough overlook of it. And at the next month meeting, we'll bring it forward with his blessing, hopefully, or with any changes that he thinks are worded. Um, and then we'll get it pushed forward so that we can preemptively get ahead of this stuff. I was just gonna ask uh, Jack at y'all's next meeting, y'all are gonna elect a chairman. And, uh, and so the committees would be coming up pretty quick right after that. If you could get uh, whoever's going to be on the uh, codes and zoning committee, if you could get those names to Sam, and if we haven't already moved forward with it, we could get that to them also so they could already be becoming familiar with this, you know, beforehand. Is it up to date? I'm, I'm just curious. I don't see the mining stuff on the in the Charles County thing. Is it there? Or I just missed it or? Is because we've often we've said things, you know, we've passed ordinances that were, were never recorded and right. Yeah, and the mining was just done what a couple of months couple ago. A couple months ago. I don't see it. Maybe is I'm the missing mining it. on there, Sam. The so the table of uses that we used is based on what is already approved within the zoning ordinance. So because there was no uh the the amendment that went forward uh, that listed mining as an allowed use within uh, M1 and A1 was not approved. Therefore, it still has not been resolved where that is allowed. So that would be something that would be amended within this table when that issue is And it, it has been approved since then. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. M1 only, right? Yep. As soon, soon as I get the... M1 only, right. So maybe we can add that to it. And yes, it it's it's like it's like the mapping. Um, we gather all the ordinances up, um, oh, and once we get the signatures and yeah. everything's good, then we way forward. That one all. seems to be uh, pretty heated. Uh, we might want that. One. <laughs> <laughs> I good think catch, it, Mark. Yeah. Thank you for that. I think if nothing else, just to have a copy in front of each one of the commissioners as we're voting on rezonings, you know, just laminated copies and. Here, here's your reference, would just make things a lot easier, especially for newer uh, commissioners coming in and, and some of the older ones who still ask that question of, well, what do you plan on doing with it? That's irrelevant. And that's right. Exactly. That is irrelevant. They need to learn that. But what I would hope was during the county's work session, they would look at each rezoning topic that came up, and then that would give each commissioner a week to pull out their tables here and look and see and do their homework and then if they had questions while doing that homework they could get in touch with sam who could answer those specific questions for them and uh, and if he needed help from keelan he could contact her and she could suit send any commissioner any information that they needed uh, but i think sam could handle all that but the way the county commission being said i think it's great with the work session and then a full week later, the meeting, uh, they got a whole week there to do their homework. In. It's not like it's just being popped on them there on one night. Or at least I hope it's not like that. <laughs> yes, sir. Sure. Um, like before, uh, uh, the properties that are already zoned um, or um, my question is, where would we uh, uh, determine, uh, like, something wants to be built, when do we determine if it's got to be brick, it's got to be metal, is it before something's rezoned or what? Well, that's that's a uh, under the uh, building codes and stuff. That really has nothing to do with the rezoning process or anything like that. That's that's something that we discussed at the very beginning of this meeting, and Sam is talking about they're working on that and hope to have us something in by November to be able to uh, send to y'all. But is that uh, like a 
planning commission like in charge of that? Or? Well, that's something that we would look at and and uh, uh, come up with some recommendations, send in a resolution or whatever to y'all for y'all to uh, to pass. That doesn't take away your ability to to do something on your own if you want to go to all the work to make sure that it adheres to current policy and all, that's, that's a lot of work. That's, that's why we have these two guys because right. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I, I would just want yeah. to, it would be, it would be better to let it come to work its way through the system and hopefully the kinks would get worked out and stuff in that. And then we would send it to y'all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any, anything else? Appreciate everybody being here. I have a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. Uh, Mark. Mark. How are you doing, Sam? Yeah. I've had that. I'll tell you what I did. Let me turn this off.